Papa. Il fait froid ici. Merci. Tu me crois si je te dis que j'y suis pour rien Ils t'ont pas donné à manger. Tu me crois Arrête hey Faites quoi, monsieur Ça va pas bien, là Qu'est-ce que vous foutez, là C'est pas bien de frapper un enfant, monsieur. C'est le mien. Et alors, ça change un truc je fais ce que je veux, vous êtes ici chez moi, c'est une propriété privée. Je crois que la porte était ouverte, on n'a rien défoncé du tout. Hein. Ça explique pas ce que vous faites là. Je suis une amie de Violaine, la mamie de Colombe. Et Eh ben, on voudrait de l'aide. Soyez elle a disparu depuis hier soir. Ça, c'est sûrement où elle est. Alors, on la cherche. Elle est ici Bah ben non. Ça y est, vous avez trouvé quelque chose Pas encore. Qu'est-ce qui peut prendre autant de temps Faut juste leur laisser un peu de temps. Du temps Il faut penser à nous, là un nos gamins massacrés par un malade dans une forêt. Quand est-ce que vous allez l'arrêter, Staré Quand est-ce que je vais pouvoir serrer ma fille dans mes bras Calme-toi, chérie. La fille qui était avec vous sur les falaises. C'était Marie-Thérèse de Calvé. Qu'est-ce que tu lui veux Rien. Elle est avec nous depuis le début. Ça veut dire quoi depuis le début Depuis décembre, ça fait presque huit mois. C'est vraiment une chic fille. Le réseau lui doit beaucoup. Elle est là-bas avec nous. Il a raison. Ce soir, c'est peut-être pas le bon moment. I was all dressed up to go out and take Amélie to a basketball game. I started to go out and my father said, you have to milk the cow. I asked him, would you please milk it for me? And he said, no, get your ass out there. So I went out and I was in a hurry and didn't have time to <laughs> change my shoes. And <laughs> I had cow shit all over my shoes. Hi, everybody. This is David P. France, and I'm coming to you from Basel, Switzerland. Before we get started with the interview, I'd like everyone out there who's watching uh, to like the video, share the video with uh, your friends and family on YouTube, and also feel free to comment on the video and let people know that what we're up to. This is David P. France TV. We are a platform for creators and creative people, artists, inventors, thought leaders, small business owners, entrepreneurs, and the like. And today, I'm speaking with someone who I've known uh, for a while. He and I have met years ago now. This is an actor um, based in Paris, France, Antoine Michel. And uh, Antoine, how are you this morning? I'm fine. I'm fine. How are you? I'm fine. I'm doing well. As, uh, just really... So we tell the audience how, you know, how, how we met. Uh, I'll explain shortly. Then we go into it, which was... You know, at the time I was trying, I had, was living in Switzerland and I was trying to find people that I could uh, photograph because I wanted to become this big photographer, right? Uh, and I, I found uh, you online and you know, say, oh, this guy's an actor. So maybe if I photograph him, right, and, and get, get a chance to, to, to do this, then something else would happen. So little did we know many years later, <laughs> the opportunity comes in this form, right? So um, thank you for allowing us to, to have the conversation with you this morning. No, I'm happy to do it. Yeah, well, so tell the audience, you've been acting uh, for a while now, but tell us uh, a bit about yourself, how you started and, um, yeah, and, and explain a bit more for us. Okay, so I started uh, as a child, uh, as a model, in fact. I, um, I do a lot, I did a lot of uh, advertisements and uh, pictures. And uh, after, when I was a teenager, I, uh, I started to be interesting, interested by the acting. And uh, I started to to walk on stage as a teenager and to do a lot of theater and um, stage in all over the France. And, um, and then I started to shoot uh, for TV and movies when I was around like 20. 
and um, that's it and that's my life <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it, it pretty much is your life i mean i i i of course see you on social media and it's like uh at least years before you were a project there seemed to be projects coming on a consistent basis tell us well, what's happening now with regard to the current situation that we're in and how is it impacting you and the uh the acting world in france well yeah it's um it's yeah i don't feel comfortable with it because of the government gov government decisions you know mm. because they close all the theaters and the cinemas and i don't think it's these are places where you can, I think it's quite safe places, in fact, because they open the supermarkets, they open the subways and everything, but not the culture. Culture is closed. Museums are closed. All, all the culture places are closed. And I, I think it's very, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I, <laughs> It's very strange, very, very strange because the restaurants or bars, I can understand because you have to put off your mask, but in the museum or the cinemas, you are, you have, the, you are masked and, and you are, you can not be um, too, too close to other people. So you yeah. can have space and everything. And um, I don't know, this is strange, strange, I think. And uh, yes, it's impacting because we only have uh, now the shootings for TV mostly because TV are still shooting mm -hmm. a lot and um, not so much for movies because uh, they, they can't, uh, they can't, the cinemas are closed. So <laughs> yeah, we don't yeah, have yeah. a lot. We have a lot of, uh, and we don't have a theater at all. And I, um, I have a lot of projects for, for the stage and I can do it right now, but I think it's going to open in the next month. I hope so, really. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It, it, we are living in um, very interesting times. I think also, well, let's say, for example, I see a silver lining in this. Now, it may not necessarily, what we say in the United States, hit your pocketbook, right? But it has allowed me to really have this conversation with you, right? Because if there had not been this break, we would have been too busy yeah. <laughs> doing other things. Now we're still busy, but we there's certain things that we, we can't do now, right? So one of the reasons why I, you know, I'm interviewing you now, and one of the reasons why I have a platform that I created this platform is to really get the news about, get the news out about people like yourself. Because, you know, I've had my eye on you for such a while, right? I'm like, oh, I did the photography with him. How am I going to do this next thing, which I don't know what it is yet, you know? And so, uh, you know, now we have this moment where we can, where it's actually happening, right? So I, I believe that these types of things, uh, situations will happen more and more, right? Projects will come as a result of this. Yeah. I hope so. Yeah, we we can always see um, transform stuff and to see um, a good um, good good thing in 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 bad things. In fact, <laughs> it's yeah, a yeah. way it's a way to look at it and it's a way to feel it and to transform it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, tell us. Uh, we had the conversation before we started about you know. You, your your film work your television work tell us for for audiences that don't necessarily know your work tell them you know what the breakdown between film and tv is and and give us a bit more about uh your your upcoming or just completed projects well um well i started by the theater and after i'm I moved to, well, uh, but uh, I'm still doing theater and I'm still doing TV and movies. For me, it's all the same stuff. It's all the same work, but I know I like to to change. All, I'm always changing. It's like a process, you know? I love theater and now I really want to be on the stage because I 
I want to feel the audience. I want to to have this feeling, this type of energy. You know, on on when you are on a stage, audience is giving you a lot of energy and a lot. It's like because when you are an actor, to act, it's all about to do and to give, to give, to give, to to give of yourself, to give of your energy, to to give of your emotions of. Who you are, you you are giving. And on the set, you you are giving, but you don't have this time at the end. Well, you have the last day for the last scene, uh, um, the applausement. Mm -hmm. But at uh, on the theater, it's um, every night at the end. You have this um, back, this, this energy back to you, and it's an it's more an exchange, in fact. Then, uh, then, then on a set, on a set you just give, and after you are like exhausted, <laughs> you, you give all you, what you have, so <laughs> you don't have anything more. But uh, when, when you are on a stage, they give you back, so it's like an exchange. It's 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 different. But mm -hmm. I love the movies too because it's more, it's more price. Precise. It's more Precise, yeah. mm -hmm. it, the camera is so close to you. Then you don't have to you don't have to project anything. You just have to let the audience enter, and it's um, it, it's interesting too. But yeah. for me, it's like a process. I like when I've done a lot of movies or TV or cinemas. It's quite the same. In fact, it's just a question of money and time. Yeah. Because uh, for, for, for a TV film or a movie film, uh, for, for movie for cinemas, you have more time and more money. And if, uh, not, not more money, in fact. It's not true. Because in independent films, and I've done a lot, you don't have money anymore. <laughs> right, right, yeah, sure. In cinema, you have more money in TV. Like, uh, uh -huh. but, uh, but you have more time. You have more time and you, you are going to work on a on a scene for for yeah you have more time to work in fact yeah. and, you, and sometimes you have rehearsal stuff like that for TV uh, sometimes you have a lot of scenes in in some um, TV like soap operas or stuff like that you're gonna have 10, 10 15 scenes per one day it's like crazy uh -huh. it's like you are like a machine, you know, you have to do it, do it, do it, do it. And you, you, <laughs> but so, so you have to be very specific and very quick. But um, after it, it's the same, it's the same way. And even in stage, it's all the same, but with different type of energy. And that, that the energy for me, it's, it's what I like and what what I'm following. Uh -huh. Well, I mean, uh, it's it's a fascinating it's fascinating to me. And let me let me tell you this, and then we go into your your favorite actors. And when you and I worked together, what what motivated me? Part of what motivated me to um, actually approach you and and also trying to get a sense of what was going on in France was that there was the the film. What was it? The, the the film wave, the new wave. Is it called new wave? Of filmmakers that were that was many years ago, fifties or so, right? Um, that made these French films, these new uh, new wave, new noir um, films. And the person, the actor who I thought was incredible was um, Alain Delon, right? It was more. He was a visual. He was. A, he he. And uh, Jean, I think his name is Melville, uh, Jean-Pierre Melville. They they were a great partnership. Yeah. yeah. So I think I was I was yeah. like, oh, if I can just get to France, and I find someone and blah blah blah. Like in my mind, uh -huh. uh, but it had a really big impact on me. Yeah, and it it still does. I watch these movies with great. Um, Oh, I just with a great love because these guys were really at the ground, like they were at the beginning of coming up with new new ideas. Um, who are some of your 
I mean, Alain Delon. Who are you, some of your favorite actors and tell us why and... But uh, I'm gonna speak here about Alain Delon because I met him a few years ago and uh, I've done a TV film with him. And he uh -huh. was, um, and for me, it was, well, when I was a kid, I was not really interesting by Alain Delon because I was more interesting by American actors and stuff like that. And after I discovered after Alain Delon and all the French actors, in fact, and because we, we have a lot of great French actors, but when you are a kid, you are in my, in the eighties, nineties, it was more about America and uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> United States. And, um, but when I met Alain Delon, it was for me uh, incredible because well, on the set, I have a big, <laughs> I have a big problem with the first character, the first female character, and she, um, she was um, not easy. She was like thinking um, about other. She, she wanted to always to to make you feel she is the star and she is so so great, and and she was always. Um, uh, she was always fighting with me and always not good, not kind at all, really not kind at all, in fact. And uh, Alain Delon um, watched it and, uh, and, he, and, uh, and he decided to, to say the things and to say it to her to calm down because it was not um, fair, in fact. Mm. And, um, and I... Uh, it was so human and so it was, um, it, yeah, it was, for me, it was a, a really a, a big meeting in, in, in the human way, in fact. He, he really took my defense and I was in really in trouble because I always, has, always um, only have a, as a, had a small part in this. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. I was like, uh, and she was so rude with me and it was so, so it was, yeah. I, uh, thanks, thanks, Alain Delon. <laughs> <laughs> he, he was able to use his uh, charm in so many ways. I, I mean, he, he he generally plays these gangsters, right? But he yeah. also has this sort of kind, uh, back then it was angelic presence, you know? So it was sort of this, this uh, toughness, but also this, um, how do you call it? Uh, uh, not innocence. Innocence is not the right word. Uh, what would let's call angelic, <laughs> tough, yeah. tough, but also, you know, um, yeah, a presence. But it was sort of angelic. Order. Yeah, but it was he was angelic when he was very young, and after he he became tough and tougher uh -huh. with the years, in fact. And he has a, a big change in, in his career, I think, because I, I, he started uh, with big directors, amazing directors, and right. uh, he was a uh, well, quite, quite an angel, but a, a bad guy too. He was sure. angelic and bad guy. Mm -hmm. And after he became the cop, and after he became the um, the gangster, uh -huh. uh -huh. but he's he's great, yeah. He's yeah, great. yeah. And who else? Uh, who else? Young, Say oh, what? Sorry. What were we saying? So, but when I was young, I was fascinated by Marlon Brando. <laughs> uh -huh, uh -huh. <laughs> and and of course, um, why why were you fascinated by Marlon Brando? And then also, what specifically about Brando is is so fascinating? I mean, I kind of know the answer now, right? But back when I was younger, I didn't. You know, I didn't necessarily like buy into the the hype necessarily. Then I mean, you and I talked about this before we started the interview. Tell yes. us, tell us your impression of the Marlon Brando. Well, uh, I, uh, for me, for me, the, the, really the two movies that I love is The Godfather and um, Last Tango in Paris, and uh, I think he is like amazing in it. And for me, in Last Tango in Paris. Is doing something. Um, it's it's like a way to 
to understand what is acting about. Like Birdman. Birdman, it, it's a movie. Um, it, it's not. A, I, I don't know when it was Birdman. Like ten years ago, five years ago. It's, it's not an old one, an old movie. But it's really a movie about acting and and the way to understand what is acting. And I think in Last Tango, you you really understand when you watch Marlon Brando, what is acting about and how you can do it. And it's, yeah. And even if we talk about it before too, it's, this movie is a, is a problem. <laughs> Controversial. <laughs> yeah. Really, um, but I don't know about it and I don't want I respect uh, everything, and uh, but uh, ju just about the way he's acting, it, it's it's a lesson for me. It's really really a lesson. It's it's a way to to learn how to act. Mm -hmm. It's still you know acting for me is still it is it's a mystery. Like I know more about it now. Because let, let's put it this way, I'll put it this way, and then we, we ask you about uh, the other examples of, of great actors that you like. Let's say if I'm doing a dance performance, this is the way I do it now. I have to remind myself to become the actual character or to become a character in general. So let's say uh, last performance I was working, um, I was doing flamenco, even in a, a small studio, a studio of performance with mask. And I, saw, I thought to myself, okay, David, you know the steps. In other words, the actor, you know the words, you know the dialogue, but you've got to somehow embody. You have to become a flamenco dancer. You have to become that man that is the flamenco person. And whatever you need to do in order to get that into your soul, for the moment you have to do that's the only way that it's going to work yeah so part of what i'm doing let's say when i am practicing is all a mental it's it's a real mental game for me you know i say okay how would i move my arm if i was actually from you know andalusia spain if i was one of these guys that that all that's all that i did you know every day waking moment flamenco you know i have to somehow bring that into the space even though i mean look i'm not getting paid for that it's a perform you know it's, it's not this is not where you are but i realize that 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 is not what i'm doing like in general dance i would just be dancing but not really mentally there you know? well as an actor you can't be mental at all it's impossible if mm -hmm. you are mental you can't act you have to be in your body. You have to be sensual. You have to, you have to feel it. It's about energy. So mm -hmm. the mental work you have to do it, of course, but before to act, right? Not, right, not, true. Not, not at the same time, because if you are in your head, you, you can be in your in your body, and you can be in your feelings, and you can be, and you you can because it's like a way to open yourself and to to let something through through yourself. It, mm -hmm. it's, it's going through, in fact. And um, it's a way to give. It, it, for me, it's really about giving and about giving yourself and, and use yourself to give something more important. It, it's about the soul, too. Yeah, you, you have to. And, and to be open, to, to let something go through you to, to go to the the audience and mm -hmm. to make them feel something to make them thing to make their yeah it's, it's, it's about giving something to the audience it's like a conduit yeah, but the know. way to do it mm -hmm. it's um you have to to find um you have to find your true self uh -huh. And after to use your true self to put it in a character and um, to, to, because, you know, we 
are all quite the same. We are ex expressing it in different ways, but it's all about uh, the mother, the father, the love, the, the way to succeed, the way to earn money, the way to, it's, we are all the same in fact, but uh -huh. we want to express it in different ways. So you can use yourself to be someone else because you are never too far away someone else in fact. Okay, I understand what you're doing or what you're saying. Um, and you, uh, you also mentioned another actor, and we, we talked about this again uh, yeah. beforehand, uh, that you were influenced by, um, and I'll let you actually explain or tell the audience. Yeah, it's uh, Anthony Hopkins. Yeah. And, I, I, and I, I love that actor, and I love the ways, um, and for me, I love old actors, in fact, because I think when you're getting older, you're, you're, the more old you are, the more young you are too. It's like a circle of life. And mm -hmm. at the end of your life, you become more the, like a child than you are at the middle of your life, you know? And for me, acting is, it's, it's the, the same that, the child are acting, in fact, and they, they are always acting. They are always, they are acting like cowboys and Indians. They are acting different ways. And, and when you're getting old, you, you lose a lot of self, of yourself. You, 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 you forget, you, you focus just on acting, joy, joy, joy to act, joy to, to be playful, like a child, in fact. And uh, I really, I'm following uh, Anthony Hopkins on, Inst on Instagram, and uh, I think he's all, always joyful, playful, and I think this guy is so creative. It's so, I love this kind of energy, and I love, I, it's really, yeah, it's an influencer for me. <laughs> it, it is interesting that he's influencing you on instagram right it's, it, it is quite it is quite an interesting thing where you now you can go to instagram and see in, anthony hopkins right and and probably doing more now on instagram than than you would see him uh in film yeah i mean it's and in the movie i guess we can talk about um the, the, the movie that influenced you was the Silence of the Lambs. I mean, I'm I'm correct on yeah, that. Yeah, it was is the first movie that uh, his breakthrough role. Yeah. He, he changed this movie changed his life. His sure. entail. In, yeah, it's amazing. <laughs> and but he's um, he makes he, he made really interesting choices as an actor for this movie, and that's why became so big and so mm. Jodie Foster is amazing too in this yeah. and um, it's it's really about the good choices they, they, they made really good choices for the characters and it's working so so well mm. I just remember the scene where he's in the room you know in the cage I guess I think the first time they saw each other or they oh yeah right and, and um <laughs> he had the, no. but also, and this is where the photography comes in, at least where, you know, when I was connecting with you years ago on this, what I sensed, and this is very similar to dance, where I believe that everyone involved on a set or everyone involved in the process is important. So when you think about who came up with the, the angle of the shot, how the camera moved into the space, this is something that fascinates me because it also can um, raise the level of communication of the entire situation, right? So what was very powerful about that movie was the way they filmed that movie, right? The way that he used the camera as almost an actor in and of itself, you know? They really, really, let's say when you were going into the basement, right, for example, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you're, you're like, Oh, you know, like you, you literally are in your seat thinking, 
<laughs> did a fantastic job. They did a fantastic job. So, so clearly, as you and I are talking about it, the visuals are coming up in my mind. You know, um, and that that's what I would assume would be a feast for an actor, right? When the actor actually knows he's in good company, right? Not just in terms of other actors, but set, crew. You know, this is also something that I think is uh, part of dance. You know, when you have people that are in dance behind the scenes that understand what's going on. Yeah, it's, it's sure. When you are acting for theater, it's really about actors and a director, but not, not many people are involved. Mm -hmm. For a movie or TV series, it's a lot of people are in the process and it's all about make all these people to, to, to come together and to, to, to do their best to create something together. It's a, and this is great. This is, the, this is the great stuff about the shootings, in fact. And um, the great stuff too, is, it's about um, to do it in the real place. I love the places. I love to move and to, to be in a small village in the south of France and to, to meet the people there and to, because it's, um, it gives you a lot in, in, in your mind, in your imagination, um, to be in the true places, in fact. Mm -hmm. not, not on the stage, but in the true places, in the true house. And, uh, and I love that. It's not like all, during the old times they, they, they were shooting the movies in studios. But um, we have still studios in Paris. And at the beginning of the coronavirus, they, they shoot a lot uh, in studios because it was uh, safer so, and everything. And it's inter it's creative too and interesting too when you when you saw all the street or all the places made on the studio it's like amazing it's like Disney World you know <laughs> it's like <laughs> <laughs> but when you are in the real places there is the soul of the places too and um, and I like it really well speaking of soul of the places. Um... I, I, last time I was in Paris was, was a very long, long time ago. And, and one of the things that we can say about your city is that, I mean, it is one of the places, at least for Americans, that it's one of the most popular, popular destinations in the world for people. Yeah. yeah. And so um, how, what's, what is the vibe now that we're in this current situation? Are people still coming to Paris to visit or what, do you get a sense of this or do you just, is everything dead? I mean, is there anything that's happening that people can say, hey, look, we're doing this in Paris or we still have these things going or come, come but during no, this time? But for the moment, uh, all the boundaries are closed. Oh. You, you, you can't come, just Euro European pe people can come and uh, anyway, all the cultures are closed. The museums are closed. Everything is closed. You just have the supermarkets, so you just can spend your money, but you can't. You can't <laughs> enjoy yourself, really. But the the Parisians are are walking because we have to work. We are allowed to work, but we have a curfew. You know, we have to be at home at six p.m every night, every day, and, um, and we can go out at 6 a.m. So we have 12 hours to be outside, to, to work, in fact. This is the, the goal of that. We have the right to work, but we can't socialize and we can't uh, entertain. That's <laughs> what it is it about, in fact. <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah, we, it's not such a good. It's not such a good place. Uh, but I, I think it's going to change this summer. I think this summer, I hope so. We have uh -huh. to <laughs> move on. Uh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> well, let, well, let's hope. Is there anything else that you'd like to add? I mean, uh, any new project? I mean, any new projects coming up? I mean, I can ask it. I don't know if, uh, if things have been placed on hold for you. Um, at least that's what I felt. Um, but what what is coming up for you? 
Well, um, I have a movie who's running the festivals, but mm -hmm. now it's very difficult. So I don't know, but he's going to be on, I don't know, I don't know. I don't know, in fact, about the, this movie, but I've done a movie. Uh, who's gonna be released one day? <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> and uh, it, it's a movie about uh, my daughter. In the movie, I'm the father, and she's um, she 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 can't walk anymore, but she wants to do uh, motorcycles because she was a uh, championships of motorcycle before, and she she wants to get back there. And uh, it's all about that. It's it's a really nice story and. Uh, and I love to do it. It was a um, really great time. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I have a project for theater now, a lot of it. So I'm working on it. And uh, and I hope I hope to be on stage on September. In fact, okay. I really hope. To. Well, we cross our fingers for you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll see what happens. You know. Um, well, it's very nice talking to you. I um. You know, I'm not going to keep you, uh, you know, it, it is a Sunday and you've agreed, graciously agreed to, to do the interview and I appreciate it very much. You're welcome. Yeah, and we will talk hopefully very soon as some, uh, out of some movement that's happening, right, in a positive way, right? And then I, you can say, oh, Dave, I'm doing this now. I'm uh, moving and things are happening. And, but until then, I guess we have to sort of sit and wait. <laughs> no, we have to create movements. Yeah, always, of course. Always, 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 always. always. Okay. Yes, well, look. Yes. All right. Well, look. Take care of yourself, and uh, yeah, we maybe. will talk hopefully again in the future. Great. Right. Pleasure. All right. Uh, take care of yourself.